Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jessica, if you're new here, and I'm a woman in long-term recovery. Today, we are going to be talking about how you can help someone that you know and love that is in the early stages of their recovery and that is going through acute withdrawal. And as a second part of that, we're also going to be talking about how you can help them to prevent a relapse. I'm making this video because I made an earlier video that I will link in my uh, description box below. And one of my subscribers left a comment asking, if I can make this video, kind of giving you guys some tips and tricks on how to help your loved ones when they're going through these stages. The very first thing that I want to tell you guys, there is a lot of things that you can do to help support your loved one when they are fighting their addiction, because that's what it is. It's a fight. But I want you guys to keep in mind that it's our fight. And I don't say that to belittle what you try to do. I, I'm all for a support system. I wish that every person that struggles with addiction had a support system with their family members, you know, with, with anybody. It's That's not always the case. I know that I interact with and deal with a lot of people that are in the recovery community and that are still out there in active addiction that have no support system at all. So please don't take this in the wrong way. When I say that it's our fight, please don't take that as me saying that you don't have a place in this fight because you do. I just want you guys to realize as loved ones that you can do everything that you can possibly think of, but ultimately the decision to prevent a relapse and to get sober and stay sober lays on our shoulders. It lays on the addict's shoulders. Are there things that you can do to help us to make that transition easier, to ensure that we know that when we are going through a rough patch that we have a place to turn? Absolutely. And it makes me so happy to know that there are people out there that want to do that for their loved ones. I cannot tell you how happy it made me to see that comment and just to know that that people are trying to have this conversation with their family members and their loved ones because a lot of times this conversation doesn't get had. A lot of times family members are of the belief that if they just turn their back on someone that is fighting with their addiction, that that will be enough. And that's not the case either. I just want you guys to keep that in mind because it is very easy for family members that are trying to support their loved ones to run themselves ragged or to shoulder a lot of blame when they are trying to do everything. You're just trying to do everything that you possibly can. You're taking all the suggestions, you know, you're, you're doing the support and and your, your family member or your loved one is still continuing to use. And it's very easy for a non-addict to shoulder a lot of that blame. And I, I'm here to tell you guys that that's not your guilt to shoulder. That's not. Because ultimately what it comes down to is as the addict, we have to make that final decision that we are ready to start fighting. I just want you guys to keep that in mind before I get into any of the other stuff because I can come on here and make a video. You know, millions of other people in the world can come on here and make videos. We can write blog posts about it. We can have speaking events about it. We can go and uh, have support groups about it. We can sing from the highest mountain and tell you all these things that you can do to support your loved one. But ultimately, that falls on our shoulders as the person that has substance use disorder because we know, you know, we know what is going to trigger us. We know um, when a relapse is coming. There are things that you can do as our family member and things that you can watch out for. A relapse will start happening way before we pick up the dope again. So there are things that you can watch out for. It's my opinion that when a relapse happens, you know, that's that's our decision. We are the ones that decide to go back out there. And yeah, there are a lot of culminating factors that come out um, that combine together to get us to that point. But 
generally when a relapse happens, those culminating factors have been building up for a long time. You don't just wake up one morning after you have X amount of time and recovery, and then you're like, oh, mm, you know, I want to throw all that hard work away and I'm going to relapse today. That's not, that's not how a relapse happens. But I'll, we'll, t we'll talk about the relapse prevention at the second part of the video. Um, focusing on the, the tips to help your your loved one in the early stages of their recovery. So what are things that you can do to support your loved one while they're going through that? Number one that I would suggest is to be aware of our mental state. And I'm saying like you as the family member, you be aware of the mental state that we're going to be in because we are in a lot of pain, a lot of pain physically, a lot of pain mentally, and a lot of pain emotionally. I say mentally and emotionally because whatever it is that we are using those drugs to numb and to avoid, as those drugs are leaving our system, all that is starting to come back in and we're starting to have to deal with it. All of the damage that we have done during our, our act of addiction, we're starting to see the results of that. It's a heavy time in our lives. And it, start, it starts to weigh on us very heavily when we start going through our withdrawals and getting into recovery. We're in that pain. We're in a lot of physical pain because we are going through withdrawal. So that does not put us in the greatest mental state. So just keep that in mind because withdrawals have been um, compared to having the worst flu that you've ever had in your life. So just try to think about how bad you feel when you have the flu. You're not all happy-go-lucky like you normally are when you feel 100%. So just try to keep that in mind, the mental state that we are in. So if we are being kind of snotty or we're crying a lot or, you know, we're not our normal selves, keep that in mind because there's a reason for it. Be patient with us be realistic also on the same turn and ever since jay left that comment on that video i've been thinking about how i wanted to do this video because i'm kind of walking i feel like i'm walking a line here because i want to tell you guys and give you good advice on how to support your family or your loved one that is going through this stage it makes me so excited to think that families are supporting their loved ones. So I'm happy to see that. That just um, brings my heart so much joy to see that and to think that people are out there, you know, supporting people because I see a lot of the shit side of addiction. I see a lot of the hate and the stigma and people turning their backs on their family members and things like that. So seeing this good part of it makes me so happy. It does make me happy that you have an open mind and an open heart and that you would rather be there for your loved ones than not. But I still feel like I'm walking a line because I don't want you guys to, you know, be watching videos on YouTube trying to figure out how to best take care of your loved ones as they're going through withdrawals and then allow yourselves to be getting walked all over because you need to remember at the same time that I'm telling you to be patient with us and remember what state of mind we're in also remember that we are very good at manipulating and we are not far enough into our recovery yet to have started to change our way of thinking and I'm not saying that your loved one or family member is going to do that to you but it's a possibility and just keep that in mind. I have helped quite a few people that have been in this situation and their loved one or family member has just been at the breaking point because they don't know what to do. Withdrawals just puts us at a state of mind that we feel like we are going to break. It is that miserable to go through. And we will push the people around us as much as we feel like we are being pushed, if they will let us. So 
that's why I feel like I'm kind of walking a line here. And <laughs> um, so just be mindful of that. Make sure that why you are doing this and why you are going through this, that you have support for you too. You are the only one that's there supporting them. It's going to take a lot out of you, a lot out of you, because while you're going through all this with them, it's really hard on you to watch somebody else go through this and then the ups and downs of it. And if you have to argue with them and try to keep them there to keep them from going back out, please make sure that you have support for yourself. You need to make sure that you can have somebody come and sit with your loved one and so you can get out of the house. Go and get yourself some Starbucks. Go outside and smoke a friggin' cigarette. You do not have to feel like you are the only one that can do this, okay? Okay, be patient with us. Be patient with yourself. Be realistic. I don't know if I said that before, but I'm going to say it now. Be realistic. So don't expect your loved one um, to go through 24 hours of withdrawals and wham, uh, be perfect the next day. Sometimes people can go through acute withdrawals for a week or more detoxing off of that and getting that out of your body it takes a long time so please be realistic about how long your loved one is going to physically have to detox and let all of this shit get out of your body out of your loved one's body you can research it you need to research it you need to reach out to your family doctor your loved one's family doctor let them know what is going on and talk to them about it. Be realistic about it. You need to know a general idea of what your loved one has had, especially within, I would say, minimum the last 48 to 72 hours. So you will know the last drug that they think that they have put into their body. And that way you can kind of guesstimate when you're doing your research how long it's going to take for them to get those chemicals out of their body and what you can do to kind of help alleviate their symptoms and what you can expect as well. Because different things, you know, affect people different ways. <clears throat> and you also just want to research it because if something goes wrong or your loved one starts having some really concerning symptoms and you need to take them to the emergency room because there's always a possibility when we are dealing with addiction that a concerning situation could very quickly turn into a life-threatening situation. So you want to have as much information as possible on hand. So when they come to your house or whatever the situation is and they are getting ready to do their detox, that is the best time to get them to sit down and have an open and honest conversation with you. And you want to ask them questions and say, what did you use? When is the last time you used? How much did you use? And make a note of it. And that way you have that information if it is needed for an emergency situation. Moving on, things that you can do for them, like material things that you can do for them to kind of make them more comfortable, you're going to want to change their sheets a lot. When you go through withdrawal, you sweat a lot. They are very possibly also going to be having a lot of vomiting and diarrhea. Sometimes they're not going to be able to make it to the bathroom, so you're going to want to change, be able to change their sheets a lot because nobody wants to lay in a bed that they've sweated in. Warm, possibly hot, depending on how they feel and how they tolerate the temperature. Bath. A warm or a hot bath with Epsom salt in it will help with the muscle aches and, you know, the a little bit of the spasming because your muscles do spasm a lot when you're going through the withdrawals. So a warm, a lot of people suggest hot. I personally could not tolerate the hot. I could take a warm one, but I couldn't tolerate the really hot temperature that everybody suggested. The, a hot bath will help with the muscle spasms and the general achiness. The nights are infinitely worse. Restless leg syndrome definitely gets worse at night when you're going through withdrawals. So if you can take a warm shower at night, sometimes it will enable you to be able to relax a little bit more 
Um, it will help with your legs also. So a nice warm or hot shower. Like I said, if you can stand the temperature, if your loved one can stand the, the warmth, gentle exercise. I know a lot of people do yoga. I know thing about yoga. <laughs> so I cannot tell you, but gentle exercise, you know, I tell people to just move their legs around, move their arms. And I, when I mean gentle, I mean literally just like this. And the more you move, the more it wears your body out. And if your body is worn out, you're going to go to sleep. Things that you can give your loved one like vitamins or supplements to help ease their discomfort a little bit. You can give them Imodium. Follow the directions on the box. And I hate that I have to say this, but I do have to say this because I have had to take people to the hospital before because they were going through withdrawals and thought if they took the entire box of Imodium that it would help their situation and they've done permanent damage to their bowels now. Don't do permanent damage to your body to escape a temporary situation. Withdrawals are temporary. They're going to go away. And I know it doesn't feel like it when you personally are going through it or when you're watching your loved one go through it. They're going to get through it. They are going to get through it. And when they get through it and they're on the other side of it, it is a achievement that they will never forget. Um, but just remember, any any vitamin or supplement or anything like that that you give your loved one or you take yourself, if you yourself are going through this and you're trying to alleviate some of your discomfort, follow the instructions on the bottle, <laughs> y'all. Don't do permanent damage to your body. We've done enough to our bodies. Don't add to it, okay? So just throwing that out there. You can take melatonin, ibuprofen, um, or any over-the-counter pain reliever like that will help with the muscle aches, the muscle spasms, just the overall body aches that you're going to have. You can always take that. Magnesium. A lot of times when we get out of active addiction, our body is going to be deficient in magnesium and calcium. And magnesium has a lot of really good benefits for us. I take magnesium every day, even now, and it helps me tremendously. It helps a lot if you have restless leg syndrome. I very rarely now will my legs bother me at night. Every once in a while they will, but it is rare. It helped me so much. It made my body feel better. It was just, it was just so great. So great. It helped me out so much. It helps so much, and I've heard so many people use it in early recovery because it helps when they're going through withdrawals and they continue to take it well on into their recovery, years and years into their recovery. So magnesium will help you. Um, vitamin D and vitamin C, a lot of times our body is deficient in those. They are known to help with our muscles having spasms and things like that, so you can take those. And before I get into these next two sections, I just want to say you can take every vitamin, every supplement that you read about on the internet or that you that I say in this video, and they're not going to do you a bit of good if you tell yourself that they're not going to do you a bit of good. And I say that because we don't give our brains enough credit. And if you're sitting down with your loved one and you tell them that and they say, well, that's not true. It's either going to work or it's not. I, you just ask them. If at any time they're in their addiction, before you could re-up, I guess is what I should say, when you're in active addiction, you got sick waiting from what you had, what you last used, to when you could get more. You start getting sick, and then your phone rings. You get the message, you can go and see your guy or your girl, whatever it was, and on the way, as soon as you get that message, as soon as you get that phone call, you start feeling better. That dope is not even in your hand yet. And that's why I say that 
You can take all of these, but if you are telling yourself that it's not going to help you, it's not going to help you. Because our minds are so friggin' powerful, y'all. So friggin' powerful. Tell yourself it's going to work. Believe in yourself. Believe that you are going to get up and you are going to feel better. And when that sun starts going down, believe that that melatonin is going to make you sleepy. So that's what I mean, like, mentally. You need to focus on your mental state in that aspect as well. And this is me, like, speaking to the person that's going through the withdrawals. Like, focus on that mental aspect of it. Believe in yourself. That's a hard-ass step that you are taking right now. I know it. I've been there. I've been through it. And I'm standing here today telling you that, yeah, it sucks. But I also know that this in here will get you through it. And all of this stuff that I'm saying does help, but you have to believe in it. And it's not a miracle cure. There's no easy way out of this. There are very few ways that we can circumvent going through withdrawals. There are ways that we can. But if you don't choose those ways as your recovery pathway, then you're going to have to get through it. It's a temporary situation. You can get through it. And your brain is fucking powerful. And you can get through it easier if you believe in what you are doing. Just keep that in mind before I like, you know, get all crazy on you. <laughs> Something else that you guys can do. Uh, I am going to be upfront and honest with you guys. I have absolutely no experience in using these three things for relief for withdrawals. None. I've read about them. I know people that have used them. I personally have had no experience with them. So I'm just going to list them and encourage you, as always, to do your own research in them because I cannot give you a lot of information about them other than just saying what I could read about them on the internet. Acupuncture is something that you can do that is supposed to help with relief of withdrawal symptoms. Another thing that you can do that is... <laughs> it's highly controversial, but a lot of people say that they get a lot of relief from it. The use of CBD and marijuana. That I would imagine that would help a lot with the nausea and the like how bad it messes up your appetite, things like that. So I personally don't have a problem with people that want to smoke marijuana. Go for it. To me, in my personal opinion, the health benefits. The mental health benefits alone way outweigh anything else. So that is an option that you have. Uh, something I know very little about and I did not have time to research for this video, but I do want to make a video about it because I get asked a lot of questions about it, is Kratom. So I know that a lot of people use that to help with their withdrawal symptoms or to detox off of opiates. And I'm sorry to say, but at this point in time, I don't know a lot about it. If that's something that you want to use to detox off of opiates, all I can say is please do your research first because I have heard, in all honesty, I've heard more bad about it than I have good at this point. I don't know a lot about it. I am going to research it and try to make a video for you guys. So what I learn, I will pass it on to you guys. I don't know when I'll be able to make that video, but I am going to research it and look into it for y'all. Something that you can take, you have to be prescribed it by a doctor that is supposed to help with the withdrawal symptoms. That is Lucimera. And I first heard about Lucimera actually on TikTok in the recovery portion of TikTok. And I don't know enough about it to cast my vote on one side or the other. The people that are for it are really, really, really for it. The people that are against it are really, really, really against it. So I would just caution that if you want to use this in your recovery path, you speak to your doctor about it. You would have to speak to your doctor about Lucimera anyway because it is something that you have to be prescribed. And I don't know um, enough about it. Like a, a, the same with Kratom. I don't know enough about it to be speaking on it right now. 
They say that you can take Lucimera and it knocks your withdrawal symptoms by like 75 to 85%. I don't know if that's true or not. Those are things that you can do to help your loved one. Like I said, the material things uh, kind of close to the beginning of the video and then these other things. And, you know, those are just things that you can do to help them get through it, to kind of give them creature comforts. Once you see that your loved one has gotten kind of over the hump and you feel like they've they've gotten over the worst of it, keep them distracted because it's just like with anything else. Anytime you are sick, you don't want to just sit in a room and just think about how sick you are. You want to watch movies. You want, you know, to listen to your favorite podcast or read a book or whatever. Just something that you can do to keep your mind off of it. So try to do that with your loved one. <clears throat> I don't know if they would be up for like playing a rousing game on Monopoly or not, but just try to find something to do that will keep them occupied and distracted and keep their mind off of the fact that their body is in turmoil. And please remember to keep them hydrated. If you can't get them to eat anything, that's fine. Again, not a medical professional here. Anytime our bodies are sick, if we let our body get dehydrated, it makes us feel 10 times worse. Keep yourself hydrated while you're going through this because if you're not hydrated, you're going to get run down real quick and it's going to be miserable for both of you and you don't want that. So keep yourself hydrated. Keep your loved one hydrated. Take care of yourself. You guys hear me say this all the time, but God, please remember in this situation to take care of yourself. I am going to talk about the relapse prevention in a separate video because this video itself has just gotten so long. I will try to film that video <clears throat> and have it put up for you guys on Friday. So this one will be Wednesday's video when you guys are seeing it. And then I will get the relapse prevention one up and have it up for you guys on Friday. I hope that answers your questions. Jay, if you watch this video, honey, you let me know if this helped you at all or and also with anybody else that's watching, if you guys have any other recommendations or suggestions, anything like that that you want to add, please leave them in the comments below. You guys leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this video. Please, if you have any other suggestions, um, if you have any comments about any of the stuff that I said, please let me know. I love hearing from you guys. I love getting your feedback on everything. All right, and I'm going to wrap it up because this video has gotten long enough. I will see you guys on Friday. Take care of yourselves until then and take care of each other. Stay safe. Test your supplies. If you guys need anything, reach out. If you need Narcan or need to be trained in Narcan, anything like that, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Specifically, if you need Narcan, please send it in an email. But anything, if you guys need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. All of my contact information is down in my description box below. Other than that, I will see you guys on Friday. Love y'all.